Hello, I'm Tactical Pascal. Welcome to the channel. I hope this finds you all safe and well. This video is on threat priorities and reaction. If you play DCS World as a GCI or as a pilot, then this video is going to help you to understand the threats, the highest threats to your friendlies and yourself if you're flying, and how you can counter those threats. It's going to allow you to prioritize your picture and your targeting plan because you want to deal with the highest threat first and then mop up the smaller threats later on. If you played online, you're going to be familiar with a number of aircraft that you normally go up against, such as F-5s or MiG-21s. And this video is going to include the majority of the enemies you're going to face, either PvP or PvE. First up, we have the MiG-21 Fishbed. It has a radar, but it can only work for about 20 minutes before it overheats and runs out of coolant. So its main weapons are infrared missiles. It can carry the R-13M, the AA-2 Atoll D. It's a short-range infrared missile with a range of about 5 kilometers or 3 nautical miles, roughly speaking. It carries the R-60, the AA-8 Aphid, which is a short-range infrared missile with a range of about 5 kilometers. It carries the R3S, the AA2 Atoll Alpha, short range in Fred, range again about 8 kilometers, so a little bit more potent. It also carries the R55, the AA1 Alkali, short range in Fred missile, with a range of about 5 kilometers, one of the earliest Russian air to air missiles. It has the R3R, which is an Atoll C, short range radar homing, with a range of about 8 kilometers. The MiG-21's threat range is about 15 miles. Another popular aircraft for mission makers is the F-5 Tiger. You may recognise it from being the MiG-28 in Top Gun. It's a single seat light fighter that can carry two infrared guided missiles. It has a radar, but it doesn't really use it to employ its weapons as it carries the M9P-5 Sidewinder short range infrared missile with a range of about 11 kilometers. The next aircraft is long overdue in DCS. It's the F-4 Phantom, an absolutely brilliant aircraft, although it didn't come with a gun when it started. It carries the M9, four of them. It's the Sidewinder, obviously. Short range infrared missile, range about the same as the F-5s of 11 kilometers. It also comes equipped with the M7, known as the Sparrow. It's a medium-range semi-active missile. Its range is about 40 kilometers, according to Eagle Dynamics, which is utter nonsense. In truth, you're looking at somewhere to 10 to 15 miles. Next up is the MiG-29 Fulcrum. It's one of the most deadly aircraft in DCS world. There are two variants, the Alpha and the Sierra. The Sierra being the more dangerous one, as it can carry the AA-12, which is the Russian AMRAAM. Lots of aircraft use the same radar as the MiG-29, so knowing if it's a 29 or a 27 locking you up is very difficult. It carries the R-60, which is the A88 Aphid, short-range infrared missile, range of about 5 kilometers. It also carries the R-73, NATO name, the AA-11 Archer, a medium-range infrared missile with about 15 kilometers. Its biggest threat comes from the R-27 variants, the R, the T, the ER and the ET, the Alamo A to D, infrared and semi-active radar homing with ranges of 50 kilometers or 70 kilometers. The ER and ET are extended range variants of those missiles. For the ET, you get no launch warning that it's on its way. The MiG-29S also carries the R-77, or the AA-12 Adder. It's a Russian version of AMRAAM. Its range is slightly less. DCS says it's 50 kilometers. It's not. Um, but it's more maneuverable. Less range, but more maneuverable than a standard AMRAAM. And unlike other Russian missiles, if the pilot loses lock, 
if the missile's gone active, it doesn't matter. It's still going to track you. So the AA-12 is a high threat, the same way an AMRAM is. Moving on, we've got the SU-27 and 33, the flanker variants in the game. The SU-33 is basically a naval flanker. It can land on the Kuznetsov, or it could land on any carrier, really. It has advanced manoeuvring canards at the front to help with lift. And the SU-27 and 33 can carry exactly the same weapons as the MiG-29, but they can carry much more of them. They're arguably one of the highest threat aircraft you're going to come up against from the Russian side. Moving across to China, we have the Shenyang J-11 Flanker L. It's almost exactly the same in DCS as the other flankers. However, it too can carry the AA-12 Adder. That those manoeuvring fins you can see there, not a lot unlike SpaceX's manoeuvring fins, but it's a very potent aircraft that can carry uh, six AMRAMs, I believe, or six adders. It's a very capable aircraft and something that you don't want to trifle with. As soon as you can, fire on this aircraft. Fire at it at maximum range, manoeuvre away, fire again if you need to. Try not to get in within weapons range of the J-11. Which leads us on to the radar warning receiver. In this example, you can see there are four MiG-29 nails. One of them is actually a lock, a MiG-21, an F-4, and an F-5. Now, the MiG-29s, we don't know as a pilot if that's a MiG-29 Alpha, MiG-29 Sierra, which carries the adder, or a J-11, or a flanker. We require GCI to help us out and tell us what it is. If GCI is there and he does tell us what it is, brilliant we can react accordingly i would recommend for every mig-29 if you launch at maximum range on your ram ram and make that aircraft defensive you take the advantage you take the fight to them if you wait until the no escape range there's a fairly good chance there's an r27 et on its way to blow you up and that's one of the examples where you're flying along and you just blow up there's no launch warning from the et to help you stay alive, I recommend the following. When you see a MiG-29 nails or spike especially, drop chaff and flare. When a MiG-21, drop chaff at range and flare in close. For an F-4, drop chaff at range and flare in close. And for an F-5, drop flare when it's in close. That's it. That's the video. It's all based on DCS ranges. The official ranges are entirely different. I'm not allowed to discuss them. Um, they are available online in various arenas, but for <laughs> job security, I'm not going to tell you what they are. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you so much to everyone who has liked and subscribed to the channel. It is fantastic to be able to help so many of you. If you want to get more help, come and join us at Tactical DCS. The link is in the channel description, and it's also at tacticaldcs.com. Until the next time, Tactical Pascal, out!